First thing we want to do is to open up Project 2007. Now you can either come down here and click on the Start button, or if you're like me, you added a shortcut to the program on your desktop, and you can learn more about this in the Windows Vista training videos. But if you want to create a shortcut like I did on the desktop, come down here, click on the Start button, go to the Instant Search field, and type in Project 2007. And then up here in the Instant Search results, we'll see Microsoft Office Project 07. Right click on it, because we want to go down and send it to our desktop as a shortcut. Go ahead and click on it, and when you click on it, it should be there on your desktop. Once it's there, just go ahead and double click to open up Project. Before we dive into Project here, I want to explain what you're looking at. First of all, starting up at the top of the title bar. Anytime you open up Project, you'll get a generic name, like Project 1, Project 2. That is, until you click on the Save button and rename it to, let's say, My Spiffy Project. That way, anytime you're in Project and you want to know what project you're working on, just look up here in the title bar and look for My Spiffy Project. Down below, you have what are called menus that when you click on them, they expand and give you more features that you can use in Project. And then below the menus, you have two toolbars. The first one over to the left is the standard toolbar, or the most commonly used features within Project. And then over to the right, you have the formatting toolbar, which you can format your font, make it bold, italics, underline. Now, if you used other Office 2007 programs like Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, they completely remove the menus and the toolbars, and in its place, they put what's called a ribbon, or what I like to refer to as one big fat toolbar. For example, instead of the menu, in its place, you'll have what are called tabs. When you click on it, it'll reveal everything within the toolbar down below by clicking from tab to tab to tab. But we're going to go ahead and work with our menus and toolbars until Microsoft, with the next release, changes it to a ribbon if they decide to do it at all with Project. Now these toolbars are hiding objects or features that I cannot see until I go to the end of the toolbar, click on the double arrow, and then I can see more of the features or options. And again, also down over to the right for the formatting. Instead of having these two toolbars share a single row and hiding those features, I can click on the drop down arrow and say I want to show the buttons on two rows. When I click on that, it now moves the standard toolbar and it has its own row up at the top and then down below on the second row is the formatting toolbar. Now I can see all my buttons. Looks good. Now below the toolbars is what's called the entry bar. Where you can actually enter in text. Well, when you enter the text in here, where does it go? It goes down below with whatever cell you have selected. So if I select this cell and I come up here and type in the text, it will display down below after I hit enter on the keyboard. By the same token, you can just come down in here in the cell and just start typing your text. The purpose of the entry bar is to give you a little bit more of a view of all the contents within a cell where down below you can see the cell is limited to displaying what's within the cell by the size of the column. I mean, it can only go so big. So if I go ahead and select the cell, and I have a lot of text in there, I can quickly just look up here to read the rest of the text. Of course, you can also expand the columns here, and we'll go over that. In fact, if you're not familiar with Excel, I recommend that you watch my Excel training videos so you can learn how to move around in these cells, edit, use the autofill handle. All this I cover in the Excel training videos then it'll be a lot easier for you to navigate around in project. And then below the entry bar here, you have a split window. In fact, you can see the divider here that's dividing it into two panes. The left side is the table view, the right side is the chart view, or referred to as the Gantt chart. Not to confuse it with the whole view here that includes the table, because that is referred to as the Gantt chart view. So you have the Gantt chart view, and then you have the Gantt chart here. To oversimplify it, when you enter in a task here, a task name, like I want to clean out the fridge, and then you enter in how long it's going to take, like two or three hours or a couple weeks or months. And then you'll enter in the start date, and then with the start date combined with the duration, it'll give us the finish date. And then over in the chart view, it'll display a corresponding bar that will span that timeline or that duration, one week, two weeks, or three weeks, and so on. Now the project that I'm going to be taking us through is that we're going to create a software training manual, and we're going to be going through phases. We'll start with the research phase, followed by the outline, development, testing, reviewing, and then finally the last task will be printing our book, and once we've done that, we've completed the project. Now the concepts that you learn in my project can also be applied in whatever project you'll be working on. Now if you want, Microsoft Project has a little help guide that you can use to get you started by coming up here, clicking on the View menu, and going down to turning on the Project Guide. When you do that, it opens up the Task pane, and then also the Project Guide bar. Now, while this will get you started by defining your project and giving you a little bit of detail or an explanation about how to do that, it'll only get you so far. So we're not going to use this for two reasons. Because one, I'm going to be your project guide, and two, 
These are basically training wheels to get you started because once you're done with the project guide, you'll have to advance or, or leave the nest sometime to start using the menus and the buttons on the toolbars, which I'd rather get started right off the bat and get used and more familiar to that than uh, eventually having to leave it later on. So let's go ahead and turn it off by clicking on the view menu and going down to turning off the project guide. Next, I want to go ahead and save my project instead of the generic title Project 1. I'm going to click Save. Go to my desktop because on my desktop I have my exercise folder. Double click on that and then down below let's name the project. It's going to be our software and then go ahead and click Save. And you can see up in the title bar I'm now in the software training manual project or file. Now the first thing I like doing is setting up my project start date. So what we're going to do is, instead of using today's date, we're going to pretend and go back and use an earlier start date. Now two reasons why we're going to jump back to the year 2008 to do this project is, first of all, if you're in the middle of a project, I want to show you that you can definitely backdate this and then add as you go along and get up to the current date in your project. Second of all, it'll make it much easier to show the progress as we move along in a later time than it is to be in the current date today and trying to move ahead with the examples I want to show you. So to set the uh, project start date, I'm going to come up here and click on the project menu and go down to project information. That's the first thing I would do. Start date has got today's date. Like I said, instead we're going to go back. You can either click on the drop down arrow and scroll around or come up here and just type in the project start date, which is going to be 2008 and it's going to be August 1st, 2008. And then just hit the tab key so it accepts it. So when you click on the drop down arrow, it's got you right there, August 2008. Now, if you watch my Access 2007 training videos, setting up Access is a process. It's not all done in one screen. And I know you're probably looking at this current date and going, oh my gosh, we've got to change it back to the start date here. Don't concern yourself with this. This is going to be a process. So if you'll be patient as I walk through step by step and as you absorb all this in, by the end of the level one training video, you'll have a much broader perspective about how to set up your project. So we're going to move ahead and click OK. And then it takes us in the timeline over here to the year 2008. And then the next thing I'd like to do is to add our company name to the project, who's the manager, who's in charge of it, things like that. Now I have nowhere to type it in here, so what I'll do is I'll use the properties. File, and then go down to properties. And this will give me a chance to type in who the author is, the company, and so on, which it already auto-filled in, like the title here, Software Training Manual. Maybe the name of the software is Spiffy, so it's a Spiffy Software Training Manual. And then down here, the subject is Training Manual. Basically anything you want to keep track of that you don't want to display up here, but you want to have some personal notes in the properties. Not only that, but any keywords you type in here will be searchable. So if you have a thousand projects and you remember one had the word spiffy but you, you don't have it in the title here, you can do a search, an instant search, from clicking on the start button and typing in spiffy and it'll actually pull up this project because one of the keywords you have in here is the word spiffy. And then of course any comments you have about the project, go ahead and type them in there. And then of course when you're finished click OK. Now one thing I want to warn you before we close out of this session is that when you start entering in your task and you're going through and you're making all these changes, remember you do have an undo button to undo your mistakes. Now I'm assuming that you've watched or you learned Excel or one of the other basic office programs before you dive into project. And if you have, again you'll have your undo and redo buttons. So you can undo your mistakes or redo your mistakes. Now when you click on the save button, this undo will disappear. Unlike Microsoft Word, when you click save you can still undo your mistakes. So keep that in mind that before you click on the save button make sure you're feeling confident with all the changes that you made. Or if you're not sure go ahead and save a copy of your project as copy backup 2 or backup 3 and so on. That way when you click save and you lose the undo button and you just realize you made a major mistake you can of course revert back to that backup copy. For example there's the undo button when I click save it disappears. I can no longer click on the undo.